Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about dust collection and more specifically uh, the things that I use here in my shop for dust collection. So this is not like a review video or anything and I'm not affiliated with ShopVac or this is not a sponsored video. I just want to be able to pass along my experience uh, with the things that I use here in my shop and just pass those uh, things on to you in, ho in hopes of uh, providing you value with uh, information. So uh, right off the bat, let's just talk about these two here on the table. Uh, so these are shop vacs. These are uh, what I call just mobile vacuums. Uh, this is one of the smaller ones, and so I'll just start with it. Uh, I've got this one mainly for quick cleanup. Um, this is rated for uh, 175 CFM. This is a four and a half horsepower uh, five gallon unit. Uh, it, it, it's, it's not going to be something that you want to use at, you know, say a, a dedicated tool or something for dust collection, but uh, this, this unit's perfect for uh, just quick cleanup and say maybe you want to drill a couple of holes or, you know, make a few cuts. This will clean up dust off the tool or off the floor or you know whatever so uh, this this uh, hose on this unit is seven feet and the power cord is six feet now i can't use this uh when it's plugged up on one side of, you know one side of the shop on one wall i can't go and clean up on the other side of the shop so i don't use this every day but i do use it quite often um, but this is just my little quick cleanup go to shop vat. Now this one is a little bit bigger. Uh, this one's rated for like 200 CFM. Uh, this is a 12 gallon and this unit is uh, used every single day. Uh, and, and also this is a six horsepower uh, and whereas this one's like 45 liters, this one's 18 liters so it's quite a bit difference in the volume that it will capture. Uh, but this is my go-to shop vac. Um, I use it all the time. So I'll, I'll connect the end of this hose up to like say a random orbital sander or my belt sander or something like that. Use it uh, that way. Uh, I'll also use it to clean up the floor in certain areas that I can't use other uh, dust collection, <clears throat> mainly the one behind me I use for that. But for the areas I can't reach very well, I'll use this uh, shop back here. Now, the casters that come on these things are very good. They don't look like much, but they roll really well on my concrete floor. I don't have a finished floor. Uh, my floor is kind of rough. It's uneven in spots, uh, but it's semi-finished. So this thing, these things don't have any issues whatsoever rolling. I can just vacuum pull on the hose and it just follows me around so that's that's really good and the one thing i do like about this dust or this uh, shop vac is the power cord is 18 feet long and my shop being a 20 by 20 and the hose is seven feet long i can plug this up on one side of the shop and go all the way around my assembly table on the other side of the shop and clean up over there as well so i really like this one because it's got the power it's got the the volume here um the cord can reach and the attachments and all and both both of these are great so I, I really like having these shop vacs well you you might be asking well why do you need this one if this is like my go-to well like i said if i ha had this hooked up to like a a sander or something and then I also need to clean up a little bit. Well, I've got this one ready to go. Um, you know, so it's just, it's really personal preference. I like to have a couple of these. That's why I've got a small one just because I don't need two big ones. Uh, so this is my go-to and I have this as secondary. Uh, and this one runs about $65. This one runs about $130. Uh, and I'll have links to these over on the website article. And the website article link is then in the description. Uh, now, talking about the other two collectors that I've got, I've got the Harbor Freight unit that is a two horsepower. It's rated for uh, 1550 CFM. If I didn't mention, this one's rated for 200 CFM. So this is 200, this is 175. So a little bit of difference there. Uh, but the Harbor Freight is rated for 1550 CFM. And it's, uh, like I said, two horsepower. All these units are 120 volt. Um, that's Harbor Freight unit is a 20 amp peak. 
So I tried to use, when I first got this, I tried to use some uh, remote switches that you can uh, plug into your outlet and have a remote cut it on from a distance um, just to try to see if it would work and they were rated for 20 amps and it didn't work. So uh, I, I recommend if you're going to use something like that, go with like the long range extender um, that you can find on Amazon. I'll link it in the article. So, but the first thing I did when I got this dust collection was I replaced the bag filter uh, that comes on it and when I replaced it with a wind environmental filter uh, which is a canister filter uh, and they have different uh, levels as far as ratings go um, I got the one that was around 130 bucks and what it is, is a, it's a pleated filter inside of a canister like a cage uh, type thing and it just increases the surface area that uh, allows more airflow so it's able to run better. It gives it more, more power because it has more airflow, um, and it just it filters more than than the bag would. Uh, so that's the first thing that I would recommend doing is changing out that filter. Now with the Harbor Freight dust collection system, I've got it piped out into my shop. I've got pipes on my ceiling and I've got drops of different tools and such and it's also going through a separator so that it doesn't move it stays in the same place all the time uh, and that's great if you want to use it for that and that's probably what it's intended for um, I also have a video I'll link it in the website article as well where I talk about piping out uh, different uh, tool stations and running pipes and the different connections that I used. Uh, I was on a budget, so I was trying to find a way to, to get a whole, a full, uh, a full blown dust collection system piped out in my shop for, uh, you know, some that didn't cost an arm and a leg, so to speak. So if you want to see that video, I'll link it over in the website article. Uh, but going back to the Harbor Freight unit, uh, if you didn't want to connect it to a, uh, a permanent system and you want to move it around, uh, my unit is three years old and the casters aren't that great. They don't want to roll and they don't want to turn very good. So I would recommend changing the, the uh, casters out as well. Uh, but other than that, I think the overall collector is great for somebody starting out. It's less than $200. You can get it on Amazon, less than 200 bucks. You can get it at Harbor Freight for, for less than 200 plus. You can get a coupon to use at Harbor Freight as well. So um, that is a good starter unit. Now, mine has a five inch inlet, whereas some of the ones I've been doing research on uh, I found have four inch, so just keep that in mind if you're considering one of these. But another option you could do with this Harbor Freight dust collector is to have it in the middle of your shop uh, if you didn't want to wheel it around. Have the collector in the middle of your shop with a long hose on it and so you can connect it to the different tools that you have. <clears throat> and that will work just fine too. Uh, and that way you wouldn't have to worry about replacing the casters and that kind of thing. So uh, it really has been a good unit. I would also look into, if you went with something like this, to uh, use a separator. I have a 55 gallon drum that I use as my separator. And basically what that does, if you're not familiar with it, like when a tool makes dust or chips, all, the, all that dust and chips leave the tool, go up into the pipe, go through the piping system and down into the collector, actually the separator, and the separator has a, an in and an out. So all of the chips and stuff would fall down in the separator, settle at the bottom, and the airflow continues through the separator over to the collector. Uh, and so what that allows is the uh, heavy chips and different things you may pick up uh, that might damage the uh, blade on the fan and the uh, dust collector itself. Uh, it would allow all that heavy stuff to settle in the separator before it goes through that. Uh, now you will have some dust to make it through and so you'll have to eventually empty out the bag on the dust collector but um, I, I haven't emptied mine in, in three years so my separator has been the bulk of you know where you what you have to empty and where all the all the dust and chips are collected. So. Keep that in mind. There's a lot that goes into dust collection, uh, and I'm not getting into all that. Uh, so you might find a lot of things. A lot of people talk about grounding, not grounding. 
I'm just, I don't want to get into any of that. I just want to give you my experience on the specific Harbor Freight dust collector and it served my purpose. Um, so for whatever that's worth, I hope that's valuable to you. Uh, now the other collector that I have that you can probably see in in frame here is this dust right dust collector um, now what's different about this one it's a little bit smaller as far as CFM it's rated for 650 whereas that one's uh, 1550 um, but I don't have a whole system hooked up to this one whereas the Harbor Freight I've got a bandsaw a drill press table saw downdraft and a router hooked up to it with blast gates and different hoses and drops and such so that one loses a little bit with the leaks and uh, things here and there but this one, I just have one hose on it and I've got it on this side of the shop and I use my jointer, uh, the planer, and also I clean up around the lathe with it. And so I just use it for each individual tool as I'm using that. And it works out real well in that case. Now, what's cool about this is that it installs on a Z bracket. So you mount a Z bracket to the wall, this thing hangs on that Z bracket and you can have several Z brackets around the shop. If you wanted to move it around, um, you lose the convenience of having a centralized dust collection system. Um, you know, but that's, I guess it depends on your situation, how big your shop is and that kind of thing. So uh, if it were me, instead of having the Harbor Freight with all these tools on it, I might would have uh, one of these dust right systems on this side of the shop, one on that side of the shop, maybe one on this side of the shop, and just kind of separate my tools and get more uh, get more out of them, I guess you could say, because uh, when you have a whole system hooked up, you've got all these pipes you need to pressure, you know, have uh, air filled up in the pipes, and so when you turn your dust collector on, it's 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 sucking air from every pipe and every drop that you have up to the blast gate point. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, now, also I can, with this one, I can uh, hook up attachments. Uh, I can on the Harbor Freight unit as well, but uh, over here, what I use it for is to clean up around the lathe. I've got like a long extension arm uh, with like a floor sweep attached to it. And I can clean up around the lathe and it makes the cleanup so much faster. Um, and it's got a bag on the bottom of this that I've emptied out several times. You can put a separator on this one as well. Uh, but you'll also notice I've got the canister filter on it. And it's all, this one has the agitator where you turn this arm on the outside of the filter and on the inside what's happening is the pleated filter is being uh, hit with a flap. The flap goes around and around and around and around and it hits the, the, the pleats on that filter and knocks all the dust out and down into the bag. And so that kind of keeps it clean. Uh, whereas the Harbor Freight, the wind environmental filter, the one I have does not. And so I have to clean it manually, either beat it out or blow it out with air, you know, whatever. So that's really convenient to have the agitator. Now the filter, the canister filter for this particular uh, dust right system, it runs about 180 bucks. Uh, so that one is a little bit more expensive, but in my opinion is really worth the money. So really all of the dust collectors and shop vacs that I use here in the shop are, are working just fine. Um, Really the main thing is I just want to try to collect as much dust as I possibly can there at the tool that I'm using uh, because I don't want to just let free dust in the air without trying to collect it and not protecting myself. I mean, that's what we're doing. That's, that's the reason we want dust collection, shop vacs. Other than cleaning up, we want to be able to clean the air and uh, protect our lungs. So uh, if you guys have any questions about any of the things that I mentioned today, um, with the shop vacs or the dust collectors. If I didn't touch on something or uh, you want to know more information about it, just comment down below in this video. Um, I reply to most every comment that is left on my videos. So and if I don't know the answer to something, uh, this great woodworking community uh, will jump in and answer it for me, I'm sure. Uh, that's what I love about this community. So uh, these types of videos uh, are, are going to be uh, geared toward just helping you guys uh, with what I use here in the shop. Maybe it's information that you can use. Uh, maybe it's something that you don't really know about, like, you know, something that I use that could be useful to you. Um, I really don't want to do like reviews and that kind of thing, but 
I would like to provide information on the tools and different things that I use here in my shop because I have firsthand experience with them and I work with them day in and day out. So uh, I think it would be really helpful and benefit you guys to hear, you know, how it works for me and my shop. So for whatever that's worth. Um, anyway, if you are not a subscriber here on the channel, this is our main channel. So I would love it if you would subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future videos. We also have a second channel where I do daily uploads on different projects that I'm doing, giving behind the scenes with videoing and that kind of thing. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe over there. There should be a link in the header of my main channel. Um, of course, and you can find everything about Stone and Sons Workshop over on our website at stoneandsons.net. You can see all the projects that we do. I do uh, website articles that go in more detail about each product, uh, each project, even more detail about this type of video. So there's a link down in the description for this particular video um, that will take you over to the website where I'll write an article and provide links to all these things that I've mentioned and talk about uh, a little more detail on each one of these. Uh, and so maybe that might help you even more over there. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you can be the first to know about different projects and videos that come out and plans that we create uh, and just insider stuff. Um, so that's all I got for you today. I really appreciate you hanging around and watching this video and we'll see you next time. See ya.